the last thing anybody wants to hear when they come to someone's live stream is a microphone that sounds like crap. Crap. All right, so listen. What I would like to do with this video is I would like to show you different ways that you can tune your microphone using plugins and filters within OBS. Okay, so let's go ahead now and we'll go ahead and get into doing it through OBS. Okay, so first what we're going to do is we're going to tune my microphone using OBS and its filters. Now there's a couple different ways you can use this. You can do this with the built-in filters that OBS has or you can do this through VST plugins. Personally, I prefer the VST plugins because the plugins just work better. They're more visual. You can kind of understand things better and they're free. So you can download them. Now I prefer the Reaper plugins. I like Replugs. Uh, those are free. You can go to the Replugs website, download those for free. I recommend you get the 64-bit plugins. Likewise, Elgato's own VSTs that they've made, their noise removal plugin and their EQ plugin will work inside of OBS also. Those are also available for free download off of their website. I'll provide the links below. What we need to do is you need to bring up your microphone, right? And then down here where you see the three dots, all right, go to filters. And then we can start adding plugins. Now, the first thing I definitely recommend you do is make sure that you get your gain set properly. Uh, you want it around minus 18 to minus 12 dB, somewhere in there. Here, um, you know, with my theme that I have for OBS, it's this orange area. By default, it's normally yellow. That's where you want your microphone to kind of land uh, in terms of its level. So then if you have that, uh, then you can skip this gain plugin. But if you do not have that and you have your microphone, your slider volume all the way up, then you might need to add this gain filter and you can then increase it as you need to, to get the level that you need. So the next thing is then we can go and start adding plugins. Now, what I will do here is I'll use VST plugins because the next thing we need to do is EQ my microphone. All right, so, and this is probably the most important thing that you can do is EQing your microphone. All right, so here I've selected the VST2.x plugins, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the re-EQ right here. All right, and this is a parametric EQ. Very easy to use, it gives you four bands of equalization that you can use, and then you can also add bands as you need. Now, the first thing I definitely recommend you do is for band number one, is to set a high pass filter, all right? Or it's called a low cut, either way, it's the same thing. Here is a high pass filter that is currently set for 100 hertz. Uh, for me, personally, I would move this down to about, say, 60 hertz, somewhere in there. Uh, you can also type it in. All right, and what this is going to do is this is going to remove any super low end noise that you do not want in your microphone mix. Uh, you do not want any muddiness in your microphone. If you've ever heard the term clear as mud, that means that it's not clear at all. You want clarity in your vocal. So to remove any muddiness, you remove these low frequencies down here. Anything that's like this rumble background noise, ACs can call this, cause this. Uh, vehicles passing by your home, if you live near a road, can cause this. You know, so even your AC, your fans and your PC, that sort of thing can cause it. So you want to remove that as much as possible. And you typically, what you wanna do is you wanna listen to it, put your headphones on, and then move this up until you start to hear it affecting your voice, okay? And once you hear it affecting your voice, you wanna back it down some. So for me, um, it's right around say 60 to 70 Hertz when I start to hear me losing uh, some of my low end of my vocal. So that's how you use this high pass. And it's very important. Everybody should have a high pass on their microphone, okay? Everybody, if you don't do anything else, use a high pass. All right, so the next thing you wanna do is then you wanna find your fundamental frequency and ReQ does a really good job showing you this. Uh, the first peak here in this yellow is typically where your fundamental is. And this for me is right around 150 Hertz. All right, so I will go here. I will take band number two and I will beef it up a little bit and I'll listen to it and hear what it sounds like. And then I will move it down till I think it's good. And I don't need a lot. Um, matter of fact, maybe not even two dB. I might go with one dB. All right, there we go. So you got one dB there for me. 
Again, this is going to be personal preference. You don't want it to be super bassy though, okay? You want it to sound natural, but adding a little bit of that low end on your fundamental frequency is going to make a big difference. Now, female vocals are gonna be a little higher. They're gonna be around 200 hertz range, even if you're a, like a soprano upper register, a very high uh, vocal, you could even be in the 250. Uh, but most will be, you know, around 200 hertz. And you, you would do the same thing if you're a female vocal. Again, listen to your voice while you're doing this. The next thing you want to do is you want to find where you have boxiness. Now, boxiness is exactly what it sounds like. You're talking inside of a box. So I'll take band three here, and I know exactly where I need to go for me. I'm going to move this down to 415 hertz. Usually, it's somewhere around the neighborhood of 500. Okay, somewhere in that neighborhood um, but again, you need to listen to this. And what we do is we do a thing called seek and destroy. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to boost this frequency up real high, about 10 dB. All right, then we're going to narrow the bandwidth down a lot. Now you're hearing this on the mic, on your, on you know, on this recording here while I'm doing this. So it sounds really boxy sounding. That's what we're kind of getting rid of. So to do this, all we need to do is just instead of having it boosted, we need to cut. All right, so we're going to cut about maybe uh, 3 dB, something like that. We're going to, you know, kind of narrow this out a little bit, um, somewhere in there like that. And that's about all you need to take some of that boxiness out. Again, this is clearing up your vocal. It's making it a little bit more natural sounding for your uh, viewers. And the next thing you want to do, and you may not need to do this. You really need to listen, especially if you have, if you have a condenser microphone. You may not need to boost up some of your higher end frequencies there to give you a little bit more semblance. A lot of, of condenser microphones already have enough, they're tuned to have that kind of semblance in there. They're more sensitive and you can hear that, but a lot of dynamics do not have that. And so they sometimes need a little bit of boost. Now, a lot of, I like to do is use a high shelf and I drop the Q down or bandwidth here. Uh, you also see it as Q and other EQs. I drop it down low and what that does is this creates this shelf and I'm gonna boost this up so you can see it a lot. But that's typically what you want to do. Now, and again, you need to listen to this. Now for me, I like to boost uh, right around 10K. Uh, eight to 10K is good. Uh, anytime you get a little bit lower than that, you start in, you're starting to get into the neighborhood of where you have a lot of uh, semblance where your S's are and they can get a little harsh. Uh, but just to add a little bit more shimmer and clarity to, to the mic, I like to do this high shelf for me around 8 to 10 kilohertz. And I don't need no more than maybe a couple dB again. And this is perfect for me, typically. Uh, I may want to also find around a K, you know, 1K. Um, you may find a little bit of boxiness there. But typically, this is all you really need to do for a live stream vocal, okay? If you're doing something for like, if you're doing live, like a band or something like that, then typically you would start hunting more frequencies out to maybe enhance something or to cut more boxiness out. But for something like this, this is about all you really need to do. EQ is done. All right, the next thing we need to do is we need to do compressor. Again, I told you, uh, so we have compressor built into OBS, but again, I prefer to use the VST plugin. Also, another thing you need to think about uh, is if you have a lot of background noise. So let's go ahead and do that now. So what we'll do here, um, noise suppression is in, in OBS is actually really nice. Uh, here it uses RN noise. And what I recommend you do is bumping this up before your EQ. Uh, this way it'll get out any noise. And then when you're EQ and you're not boosting up noise, you're boosting up a nice clear vocal. Now there are some people that do not like RN noise. RN noise is really good for steady state noise that's in the background, i.e. fans that are constantly running, AC, that sort of thing. It is not good for, say, somebody coming around and running a hair dryer in your microphone or even for mouse clicks and your mic, or, you know, typing on the keyboard. Okay, but for steady background noise, stuff that's just running in the background that's not super loud, RA noise is great, and it really does a good job at not hurting your vocal. All right. Now the Elgato plugin, that noise removal plugin, is the same thing as RN noise. That's all it is. Okay, so you don't even need that. Just use what's built into OBS. All right. So now we've taken care of that, and you should have a little bit more clarity in the vocal. Now I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go ahead and turn these off, and you can kind of hear the difference between my mic with them on and with them off. All right. So this is my microphone with them off, and this is my microphone with them on. All right. The next thing we're going to do is use compression. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use another plugin. 
and I'm going to use another Reaper plugin. All right. And I'm going to select the recomp. Now there's a couple compressors in here. You got the recomp, which is a single band compressor. And then you got the re X comp. Now this is a four band compressor. You want to use the recomp for your vocal. Okay. Because what that's going to do is it's just a single channel compressor, single band compressor. All right. So this gives you a nice visual UI where you can see where your audio levels are coming in at. And if you peek up, you can kind of see where it gets a little louder. So where you're normally talking at a normal level, uh, you want your, that's going to be about where you want to set your threshold at. And then anything above that, you want the compressor to choke down on it and lower the levels of those little peaks that you have. Also, what this is going to do is it's going to allow you to bring your overall volume up with the goal of allowing your viewers to set a volume and them not having to change their volume. Here, I want to set my compressor about right here, maybe maybe a little bit higher. And uh, so if I get really excited and it's going to get above that. Attack and release, this is how quickly and that it engages and how quickly it disengages the release of course disengages so you want kind of a slower release is actually the default set for the recomp for a vocal is actually really good you want a fast attack you want it to you really clamp down on those peaks quickly and then you want it to kind of release kind of slow um, your ratio your ratio here is how many db of compression it's going to add for every db over your threshold okay that's all this compression compression is most people say four to one, okay, is a good ratio. I tell you to listen to it. Um, for me, I actually don't need a four to one. I can get away with like a two and a half to three, somewhere in there. You really don't want any more than six dB of compression um, at the max, okay, because you getting above getting above that and you're going to start sounding really choked down and you're going to lose a lot of source level out of your signal. Uh, but if you want to sound like a DJ radio, then clamp down on it because that's what these guys are doing. Um, is they're adding a more of a ratio. They're basically living is what they call limiting their signal. All right. So if you want that and you don't want any dynamics in your voice, then definitely increase your ratio higher and you can sound like a radio DJ. But for me, I like more natural and I like a little bit more dynamic. So that's what I recommend here. Okay, so I, I'm going 2.9 for me. Uh, knee size, you can change this. Now, unfortunately, you do not get a visual for this. Knee size here, probably about a two would be fine. You also have auto makeup gain. Uh, I actually use that here because it actually works pretty good. There are some people that recommend you not use it. Uh, it depends on how much source you're losing. Now, for me, I don't really have a lot of uh, signal that I'm losing, uh, but um, auto makeup will cover any of that. So if you're only, uh, you know, your difference between your input and outputs, one or two decibels, your auto makeup gain will detect that and adjust it. Uh, but if you, you know, if you're monitoring it and say, uh, I do, uh, let's see, this was set to minus 25. I bring it up and I'm at minus 12 to minus six with that. And then I bring it up here and I'm at about a minus 12. I'm really not losing, but about maybe three DB of gain. So I'll set the auto makeup gain and you'll see it here. The output's now basically back to what it was before. Okay. So that's kind of what it does for you. And what that does is it lowers your overall or raises your overall volume so that you have uh, a nice steady vocal. Even when you get quiet, it, that level's higher than what it would normally be. And then the last thing really is you want to add a limiter. Now this is basically a compressor. Um, but what you're doing is it's got a real high ratio, like a 10 to 1, 20 to 1 ratio, something crazy. Um, you can set a limiter. Here's the threshold again. I recommend you setting this to a threshold that you do not want to go above. Uh, some people say minus 1 dB um, for a live stream. I recommend a minus 3. All right, so minus 3 dB. Anytime your vocal gets over minus three db um, which it shouldn't if you have it set properly but this is more of a protection than anything because last thing you want to do is clip your signal so this is going to be what keeps you from clipping in obs right and that is it in obs that is your uh microphone settings in a nutshell inside of obs now i will remove these and you can hear the difference in the microphone as opposed to now engaging them and hearing the difference on what they do. 
All right, so that's very simple, easy to do way to tune your microphone in OBS so that it doesn't sound like crap. All right, everybody, I hope this video helped you out. Uh, listen, getting your microphone sounding right is key to a successful live stream. The first thing they're going to hear when they come into a live stream is your audio, you speaking, and you want to make sure that is good, crisp, clear, and at a good volume. Very important. So I hope this helps you out. Uh, listen, if you like this kind of content, especially these OBS tutorial type contents, uh, please make sure you like, subscribe, hit that bell for notification. You'll know when I have a new video that goes live. Other than that, everybody, thank you very much for hanging out today. And if you've got any questions or anything, feel free, comment down below. Love to hear from you. And that's it. Have a good one. See you later.